Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Breakfast with Sergio. This is episode number 91, and I'm here in the studio of Jeff Zimmerman. Jeff, good to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for that. Welcome here in your awesome studio. My pleasure. So, my friends, we are here today because uh, Jeff's going to have a solo show coming up. Uh, on October 19 at the Joby Art Center, and so you're opening our doors here so we can get a little bit of an insight of what's coming. Perfect. But before we do that, Jeff, uh, something that I always ask my guests, what's like your typical breakfast? Wow. Your breakfast of choice. <laughs> I uh, never eat breakfast. I really? Haven't, I haven't had, I, I mean, I will if we're, if I have to, <laughs> like on vacation and everyone else has breakfast. Uh -huh. um, coffee. Coffee. That's actually what you got. Yeah, that's your coffee. breakfast this morning. Yeah. That's it. No, I don't eat. Actually, I don't eat till about eleven o'clock at night. Really? I don't eat all day. All day. Is coffee, that... orange juice, and then around bedtime, eleven o'clock, I'll like do DoorDash, pig out, and go straight to bed. Really? For I... for years. Is that just because it just it works with your schedule, or is it because of personal kind of a it's a health thing, or I don't know. Like, I, 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 don't, <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember how it started, but honestly, like, I, like at a weekend, I'll eat you uh -huh. know, during the day. Yeah. If I have to work, if I have lunch. Uh -huh. Really? Then you're the first person I know that only eats at night. That's it. Like Nothing 11, 10, 11 o'clock, that's it. One time a day. <laughs> coffee, and you can live on coffee and orange juice. You <laughs> there you go. So you'll be a cheap date for that lunch. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that's cool. Awesome, Jeff. So let's talk a little bit about you, you know, your work. Uh, everybody knows you're in Chicago and also, you know, around the world because you've been traveling quite a bit with your work as well. You've been featured in magazines and all over the place as well and websites and blogs and videos. And um, yeah, everybody knows your typical large-scale mural work. But uh, let's talk a little bit about your studio practice. At the end of the day, you always go back here, right? Oh, well, that's it. Yeah, so I haven't shown, I haven't had a salon show since I think 2003. Okay. And I've been making these public outdoor pieces, like I said, mm -hmm. all over the place the whole since then, right. nonstop. But you're right, I can't always express myself the way I want to in the public. Right. You have to, you know, I have to do self editing. Because right. Not everything is appropriate to put right. out on the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but here in the studio, so I have these ideas that I'm working outside, and there's some, yeah. like, something I want to express. What do I do? Uh, if it's raining, if I'm between projects, or in the winter here in Chicago, right? I'm in here and I'm making paintings on canvas and sculpture, mm -hmm. and really not worrying about who gets to see it. <laughs> exactly. I just have to do it. Right. But finally, it's been a while, and I've got yeah. a lot of work. It's about time to share this with. Right. Everybody, so. And we're, we're pretty excited for the show. Uh, pretty excited to be working with you and creating the exhibition. Again, opens uh, on the Friday of October, October 19 at the Joby Art Center, 7 to 10 p.m. Make sure you be there. We would love to see you there. Mention that you watch this episode if you come to the opening. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Bring some breakfast. <laughs> That'd be good. Dinner. But see, I'll see you at midnight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but behind us, we have one of the pieces that you are working on. It's going to be in the show. Yeah. And even in your studio practice, I mean, it's, it's almost mural size, some of the pieces that will be in the show. Right. And even though they are done within the studio, there's this sense of scale that, that you know, you work with. So as an artist working in this large, you know, larger than life works, while coming in the studio and sometimes working on an eight by 10, you know, how is that shift happens in your mind? Uh, for, so back when I had my last show, years and years ago, uh, the gallerist came to my studio and all I had were giant, giant paintings. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and she basically said, Who's, where's that gonna go? Who <laughs> right. has a 15 foot by 100 foot wall? You know, nobody, and it's just like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Um, but, so I work, in, because I work big. Mm -hmm. I do giant faces, I do giant imagery, so suddenly I realized I was afraid Mm -hmm. to try and paint small. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was too hard, like I couldn't mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. So I came to that realization that, you know what, I'm avoiding even trying to paint something smaller. Mm -hmm. And then two, 
you know, it's time for me to make something that someone could actually put in their home or that, that could live on and go somewhere else. Great. So let's talk a little bit about the imagery too, because your imagery is also very recognizable as well, <laughs> uh, iconic, and uh, iconic in many ways too. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, those images that people will see at the show. For example, the uh, working with the ropes. Mm. You know, tell me a little bit about you know when you started working with the ropes and also the shape that you create with the rope. Uh, is there a certain symbolism for you of working with the rope? So I was trying to come up with something that showed the feeling of being tense. Okay. You know, and so you know, there's the cliche, I was all torn, I was tied up in knots. Right. So I came up with this idea with knots, and so I have over there, that you can see sitting there, there's the actual, yeah. that's the knot. Mm -hmm. So I tied up what's called a monkey fist knot, and I looked at it and I thought to myself, I can't paint this, it's got all this fiber, it's too hard. Mm -hmm. So it became a challenge. Can I paint this knot? Yeah. Um, you know, and as I was tying it, I realized I had a brown rope and a white rope. Okay. And they're two different things. You know, it's like this gestalt with philosophy, but once you put the two, pieces together, they become a knot. They work together. Mm -hmm. um, so this idea of tension also started to have a larger meaning of two things can come together and be pulled together. Mm -hmm. And as they're pulled together, they become something else and they work together. Mm -hmm. um, so this idea of two things coming together through force and pressure becoming something that's actually helpful mm -hmm. and useful. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them have like the shape even of a heart. In, well, in you, know, way, you know, as, as a I'm going to give it up to your audience that I didn't, <laughs> someone pointed that out to me. So I was just painting these knots, and uh, I forget who it was. This woman said, "Oh, it's a beautiful heart." <laughs> and of course, being the artist, I said, "Of course it is." <laughs> but I didn't even notice that shape until <laughs> someone pointed it out to me. So hence, they became the love knot. Mm -hmm. You know, like love knot. But love K N O T the love right. Man. So right. yeah, so that's you know that's the other thing. That's another mm -hmm. added dimension to you know right. what I just explained about why I'm painting those. And and at the show we'll find some of them really small and some really also large scale that you've been working with. I've got like that 15 foot knot or 12 foot knot over there, and yeah, you'll see a lot of knots. Mm -hmm. And I've painted those throughout the city and around the world, and mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of been my signature item for a while, but you know, I've been painting trash and crinkle up cans and mm -hmm. you know, I call it, and you'll see trash bags like Cheetos bags and yeah. chips bags, which uh, when I was working out in the street in more marginalized neighborhoods doing my personal work, uh, mm -hmm. my personal mural work, I'd look down and there'd be all these chips bags like okay. blowing around my feet, you know, like yeah. get out of here. <laughs> and one day I picked it up and I, and I turned it inside out and it was all shiny and I said, this right. is actually beautiful. Um, so I call those urban tumbleweeds. Okay. Uh, but in Latin. They're flying around, yeah. Yeah, they're like, and they're exactly, that's where it was. An abandoned lot with a brick wall, I'm working there, and I'm, mm -hmm. you'd see these urban tumbleweeds flying through. So cans and then chains, I'm painting gold chains now, and for years I painted hot dogs. And so Jeff, for you as a working artist right now, what's been one of the like, biggest challenges to overcome in your career? Um, I mean, you know, for every artist, it's survival first, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to become an artist, you know, if you can't survive, yeah, you know, so step one is just survival, just being able to, now. to do it, right, I mean, in hot, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, you have to just become a, you have to, you know, do great work, but then you have to get people to come see that work and basically talk about you, it's like anything else, mm -hmm. if you can become sort of popular, um, you start to get more opportunities. So mm -hmm. I did my own personal work. I did in the street for years. Um, sort of built a name brand. Yeah. Did you and enjoy that? Which and then through that, you know, mm -hmm. the phone started to ring, and so the right. more the phone rings, the more the phone is gonna ring, and so therefore you'll have more opportunities to right. create your work. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for being uh, here with us in Breakfast with Sergio. Actually, for letting your doors open for us to come in into your space. My pleasure. And I'm still shocked that you don't have any food on that you can. I'm not even on there. <laughs> yeah. See you at midnight. I'm going to bring you lunch for the opening. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. I'll share. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Jeff, so much uh, for having us here. Uh, and again, friends, please come over and check it out. Uh, Jeff will be there for the opening on October uh, 19th. 7 to 10 p.m. Joe Beer Center. Plenty of parking for you. It's going to be a great night celebrating. You know, one of the Chicago icons, one of the Chicago artists who we have come to love and to see. Uh, before I even met you in person, I you know, saw you work in so many places. 
now awesome. you know having the opportunity to work with you in this show for me it's been also a pleasure i can't wait no honor, it's a great so. place that you'll be i'm excited it's gonna be great thanks so much my friend all right man all right thank you my guys and we'll see you next time all right take care